This Week in IT. Microsoft unveils Agent 365, a control plane that acts as the command center for every AI agent in an organization. Plus, users are pushing back against Microsoft's plans to change Windows into an agentic OS. And Microsoft announced major co-pilot upgrades. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Azure, and Windows. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Chaosoft. So I'm sure that you didn't miss the fact that it was a Microsoft Ignite this week in San Francisco. And apart from the fuss that Satya Nadella wasn't given the keynote this year, which was reported in the press already a few weeks ago, and I think that's you know really something that hasn't happened in many years where the CEO of Microsoft wasn't present at the event. Anyway, they had some major updates to announce. And I think the biggest and most important of all was a new product called Agent 365. So what is it exactly? Now, you're probably aware that many organizations have big concerns over deploying AI in their organizations and especially agents. So these agents will be able to be deployed and to essentially do work for people in the background to automate things, to orchestrate what they do with other agents. And the idea is to really automate a lot of the manual things that people have to do today. Now, the problem with that is Anybody in principle, if you allow it, can create their own AI in Copilot Studio. Of course, businesses and engineers can create more sophisticated AI agents using Azure Foundry. But the problem is you've got all of these agents being created and that brings with it risk like any new technology does. How do you control who is deploying these agents, what information they have access to, and many other concerns around all of this. So the idea of Agent 365 is to deliver a control pane to businesses that allows them to see all of the agents that are being used, developed and deployed across their organization, regardless of whether they sit in Azure, Copilot, or some other system that's used for deploying AI agents. So Agent 365 essentially is providing a central registry that serves as the single source of truth for an organization. So IT admins can quarantine unsanctioned agents and see usage and security data. So they're hoping that this is really going to eliminate those potential blind spots. Microsoft said that it works by giving every agent a unique agent ID and standard policy templates can be used to enforce things like least privilege access and risk-based policies can be applied and this is all going to be managed by Entra. Agent 365 is going to provide unified dashboards that map the connections between agents, users and resources, also measuring the return on investment of these agents. Are they really worth it at the end of the day? And businesses will have access to detailed logs, reporting, and e-discovery for compliance purposes. Microsoft says that Agent 365 will be able to work across open source platforms and third-party platforms that are used for deploying these agents, and that's all going to be uh, kind of connected together with WorkIQ, which I'll speak about later in this video. And they'll be using all of these technologies that they've already developed, like Purview and Microsoft Defender, to have that secure foundation for deploying and managing agents in your organization. So you'll be able to use that technology to block attacks and to prevent any organizational data leaking outside of your business. Now, this is only available, I believe, to what Microsoft calls frontier firms at this stage. So these are organizations that have opted in to test essentially this cutting edge technology and to use it. But of course, it will become more generally available probably sometime next year. Before I go into the next story, I've got a quick favor to ask you. About 58% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 13,750 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 13,000. 
1,800. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Now, this has been an interesting story. It was first broken, I think, by Windows Central last week. I also reported about it on Petri. And there was a blog post this week from Microsoft from the president of Windows, Pavan Davaluri, and he was explaining how Windows is basically being turned into an agentic OS. So if you read those posts, I don't know, basically Microsoft is adding uh, what it's going to call wor agent workspaces. So essentially these will be workspaces that have limited access to your local data or any data that you might have access to elsewhere. And it will be a secured environment where agents are really limited to what they can do and can only do things that you give them permission to do. So if you think in the future, things like the Microsoft Office apps might come with the app itself and then an agent that gets installed into Windows that can work in this special environment, but with quite a lot of restrictions around what it can do until you give it access. And Microsoft is saying these environments will be, you know, lightweight, but also secure. Now, we all know that there's lots of people who just, you know, are not buying into the whole AI thing. They don't want AI anywhere near any of the work they do, any of the systems that you, they use online, and they definitely don't want it as part of Windows. Now, as far as I understand, these agent workspaces will be something that you can disable. Uh, I don't know whether it will be a Windows component that you can actually uninstall because there will be you know, quite a deep integration with the operating system. But of course, the problem with all of these AI technologies for them to be truly useful, they have to have access to your data and they have to be allowed to learn what it is that you do and how you work. Well, they don't have to be allowed to do that, but it makes them more useful if they're allowed to have a memory, if you like. So I think a lot of users and and IT professionals are a little bit concerned about the security implications of all of this. Personally, I don't think that whatever the pushback on this, we're not going to see a change in direction from Microsoft, even though they blocked the comments section on that blog post. I think that they're going to push ahead with this anyway, because I think there would be you know, a, like a business suicide not to do it. It just depends, you know, how they do it and do they go you know, about doing this in the right way. Hopefully, they've learned from all of the mistakes that they made with Recall over the last couple of years, if you remember that scandal on Copilot Plus PCs. So they just need to go about doing this in the right way to convince people that it's secure and can be enabled and disabled for those people who don't want to use it. IT professionals and users really are complaining why you keep adding these new features to Windows when all we want is a stable, reliable, consistent experience. And Microsoft has noted this week that they've got a lot of work to do in Windows to bring those things to the table as well. So I can understand the frustration of all these features coming when, you know, it's seen by many people that there's a real problem with delivering updates, a really strange inconsistent experience sometimes on Windows 11. So I think, you know, they also need to address those things at the same time. I haven't seen it, but apparently there was some kind of promotional video this week that Microsoft uh, put out there. I don't know where it was on their site or YouTube, I've no idea. But there was some kind of demo where an agent was working in the background to, uh, from what I understood, change a setting based on natural language input from the user. And instead of doing what it was supposed to do, it changed the wrong setting. So, you know, this is, you know, technology that's still in its infancy. So I can really understand the concerns over this, especially if you're going to give it access to your data. And it needs to be a lot of control and insight into the things that it's changing. And that is one of the big problems with, you know, AI in terms of using it to modify content. You know, it often does things that you didn't really want it to do. And to try and understand what it did and why it did it can sometimes be a problem. So, of course, Copilot was at the center of everything, really, that Microsoft was talking about at Ignite this year. There were lots of updates to Copilot, but I think one of the most interesting is something Microsoft is calling work IQ. So this essentially takes 
your organizational data and what Microsoft calls memory. So the things that you do with AI and the way that you do it. And it combines those two data points to try and predict what it is the next thing is that you should be doing or which is the right tool to do what it is that you're trying to do. So it adds that little bit of extra intelligence to the process, essentially, to stop you having to think about, well, which agent should I use for this? What is it that I should do next? And to bring that intelligence to help it be a better AI, to be a better teammate, essentially. So Microsoft says that this is going to be embedded into its applications, you know, Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, all of that kind of thing. And it essentially you know, provides an AI my feedback loop so that the idea is that it has constant improvement and a better understanding of what you do to help you better. Microsoft announced that Word, the agent for Word, is generally available in Microsoft 365 chat. I haven't seen that or be, be able to use it, so maybe it's a gradual rollout, I don't know. So the idea is you open up Microsoft 365 Copilot chat, and you're able to have it, you know, Microsoft call this vibe working, if you can stand that expression, describe the document that you want to produce in the chat, and it will go off and use Word, and voila, there you've got your document. This agent mode may also be, you know, I, I guess it will also be directly available in the Word app itself. And for Frontier firms, this agent uh, mode, if you like, is available now in Excel and PowerPoint, and of course will become more generally available probably early next year. There's more voice interaction, so people will be able to use Copilot on their phone to ask about priorities about things that they should do or miss meetings. Outlook is now going to offer a one-tap a one -tap prompt to summarize and reply to emails, and apparently can also schedule meetings on the go. I'm not sure exactly what that looks like. I think this is the update to the, the Find Time plugin that apparently is now being made part of the new Outlook experience. So that old plugin that existed for legacy Outlook, and I suppose that it's being boosted with AI functionality to help you schedule meetings. Well, if that really works well, <laughs> that would be great, of course. Microsoft also announced that firms in the Frontier program are now getting access to Sora 2. So that's used for creating images and videos. I've never used that myself, but it seems quite scary, some of the things that it can do, to be honest. So I'd like to see that come, uh, of course, generally available, again, probably early next year. And Microsoft announced Teams mode for Copilot. So essentially, this will make it possible for you to work on Copilot chats with a group of people to make that easier. And they also said that they are releasing more collaboration-based agents, so like the facilitator agent that allows you to drive meeting agendas and take notes and even schedule follow-up actions. So these agents can also connect to third parties like GitHub, Asana, Jira, using the model context protocol. So they were all the really interesting and I think most important announcements for people like us, you know, system administrators, IT pros that are working with these Microsoft technologies. I'd love to know what you think about the direction that Microsoft is going, especially with Windows and all this other stuff, of course, with agents and the agents. 365 control plane. Is that going to be something that's going to make it easier and more viable for you to uh, utilize and embrace AI in your organization? I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get it seen by more people on YouTube and to grow the channel. I'm going to leave another video for you now on the screen about how Microsoft is bringing proper third-party support for pass keys in Windows 11 with 1Password and Bitwarden, so do check that out. But that's it from me for this week. I'd like to thank again our sponsors, Chaosoft. Have a great weekend and Thanksgiving if you're in the States, and I will see you next time.